And you're still on Morning Live. Thanks so much for tuning in this morning. Now, among the fans that came out to support Banyana Banyana yesterday uh, was a very, very special guest on show. And that was, of course, the World Cup, the Women's World Cup that uh, the teams will be playing for in France later this year. And uh, this, of course, was taking place at the Moses Mabida Stadium yesterday in Durban, where South Africa and Jamaica played to a one-all draw. Now, uh, to talk to us more about uh, what happened happened yesterday and also of course the trophy being in South Africa at this point we are joined uh, by uh, SAFA president Danny Ordan as well as uh, Sarai Barriman who is a FIFA head of women's football and they joining us from our Durban studios this morning thanks to both of you for coming through Good morning and thank you very much. Thank you very much. So let me start here, Sarai. What did you make of yesterday's match with both uh, of the teams playing their debutants to this year's World Cup? Oh, it was an incredible match. I think we're going to see two very good teams take to the pitch in France this summer. And the atmosphere in the stadium was amazing. I think the Banyana Banyana fans, together with the Reggae Girls fans, will be two of the most loudest, proudest groups of fans in France this summer. So uh, it was an exciting preview of what we're going to see. And Danny, from your side as the South African Football uh, Federation, what exactly is your um, mandate for the South African women's team, for Banyana Banyana, going into this World Cup? Well, it is our first uh, qualification for a World Cup for women's football in our country. Uh, and so uh, we invested a lot of time, energy, to prepare the team very well. As you know, they played in the Kosafa Cup where they were the champions. They played against Netherlands. They played against Sweden. They then went to play uh, now in the Cyprus Cup, uh, back to play the farewell match against Jamaica. So I think they are well prepared. From here, they're going to Santa Clara uh, in the United States uh, for further matches against the U.S., of course, former champions of the, of the world. Uh, and we look to give them sufficient uh, support and preparation to hopefully get into the second round. That is uh, what we hope and expect from them. Speaking of that match against the USA, Danny, the USA, of course, the most successful team in uh, women's uh, World Cup history. And is that the only warm-up match that South Africa will be playing from here on in? Well, they have been playing a number of matches have indicated uh, since December of last year, they were virtually in camp uh, up until now, and then they continue against the United States. Then they come back. We look at playing another one or two matches, and then they go into France, uh, where they will play another few matches before their first match on the 8th of June uh, against uh, Spain. And then they play uh, the Korea-China People's Republic and finally against Germany in Montpellier uh, and those are, are all major footballing nations uh, in the world of women's football. Now, Sarai, just coming to you and one of the concerns that you've raised, you spoke about the level of support and uh, that it is not uh, what we would want it to be, where we would like to see it at. But of course, this is not a problem peculiar to South Africa. We know that in the United States, uh, the U.S. Federation, they have actually lodged a class suit in this regard. There have been uh, similar actions in Sweden. So... How do we then change the situation? How do we get more support for the women's game? Yeah, I think if we are trying to increase participation and the number of women and girls that are playing our sport, it's important that there's a clear pathway for those girls. And it's also important that those players know that if they do make it to the highest level, that they can earn a living doing that. For me, it's a very difficult question because the situation in every country is different. Uh, in FIFA, we have 211 member associations. We have, for example, the United States that we were just talking about where they have a professional league, players are able to earn a living. And then on the other side of the scale, we have some countries where women and girls are still not allowed to take foot on the pitch due to various cultural and religious barriers. So 
To address it, I think we really need to address the entire ecosystem of the game. We have to look at the development, the grassroots, the communication, commercialization of the game. I think also governance has a big role to play in it. To have more women in leadership positions within football is very important. Uh, I don't believe that there is any kind of overnight um, solve for this issue, but for certain, uh, the Women's World Cup this summer in France will be a big platform and a huge milestone for the women's game and for those players. Now, as we indicated earlier, the World Cup is here in South Africa. This is its first stop on the continent. And uh, talking to the aspects of development, you know, how are you hoping this particular trip, these roadshows, will actually assist in that regard? I think it will assist hugely to be able to be a young girl or boy uh, to attend a trophy to a stop, to be able to physically see uh, the trophy with your own eyes. I think it helps to really understand and realise a, a dream of playing for your national team and one day being able to hoist the Women's World Cup trophy. Uh, the other thing is we are bringing the players and former players and legends with us on the tour to help promote the Women's World Cup and women's football. And I think also for young boys and girls to be able to see those players, uh, to be able to see those former legends uh, also helps them to realise and understand their dreams in the game. So it's, it's really important. It's been a huge privilege. Uh, as you mentioned, it's the first time in history of the Women's World Cup that this trophy has been on African soil. And for the first country to be South Africa, I think is very special. And who are some of the legends uh, that are touring uh, with this cup? So here in South Africa we have Portia Modise. Uh, she is one of the most capped women's national team players. She scored 102 goals in her international career. She has a larger than life personality and she was with us at the match yesterday. We had a grassroots festival beforehand and she was on the field running around with those young girls. I think that was a really special moment for them. And Danny, uh, with regard to development, and as you've heard uh, some of the issues highlighted there about uh, getting uh, the sport professionalized and maybe a greater exposure for more girls and women. So as far as uh, SAFA is concerned, what are some of the programs that you are currently engaged with in this regard? Well, as you, you know, we, we've seen tremendous growth in the number of players, women players in the country. We moved from 2013 with 200,000 players to 456,000 players today. We're looking at one million women footballers uh, by 2022, focusing particularly on getting girls to play uh, at the school level. Uh, yesterday we had uh, many girls coming out and it was just amazing to see their response to uh, Posse Madisa and also to the Banyana players. The World Cup itself is a trigger. In 1999, I think the transformation of women's football in the United States was triggered by the 1999 uh, victory and hosting of the World Cup in the United States. Similarly, in, in Germany in 2011, uh, where I think the, there was also a transformation of the World Cup as an event itself. It became a major event, both in terms of spectator support in the stadium, but also the global audience of, of the game. Uh, and I think uh, the 2019 World Cup in France is going to break all barriers. And uh, now you see the interest of countries wanting to host uh, the World Cup. Uh, you may know that for 2023, which is after France, uh, Brazil wants to host, and so is Argentina, Korea, Japan, Australia, and of course South Africa. Uh, in the past, to host the Women's World Cup, you simply had to ask. And if you get the letter to FIFA, you get awarded the Women's World Cup. Those days are gone. And that shows you both in terms of the interest, uh, the growth of women's football, the commercial side of women's football. It's, it is certainly on the up. And I think it is the current leadership of FIFA that has come together with a strategy for the global growth of the game. And, uh, we are happy to have Sarai here, who is the head of women's football in, in FIFA. And this trophy in our country, of course, we also had the men's trophy here in 2010. And we are blessed that one of the few countries in the world that had both the men and the women's uh, trophy, World Cup, uh, in our country to celebrate the sport. And, and of course, this time, uh, the focus is on Banyana.
And just a final question, what is the level of progress in those discussions with government regarding that 2023 bid? Well, I think uh, uh, where we are now, we have submitted uh, our interests uh, to FIFA. The next step is on the 4th of October, we must submit the bid book. And between now and then, we have to sit down with government to discuss. Uh, and once we get the green light from the government, we can then proceed. Uh, so that discussion uh, will happen with government. And after that, we will then have to become a serious bidder. But it depends on the go-ahead of the government. Well, Danny and Sarai, thanks to both of you for uh, joining us and speaking to us this morning. And of course, the excitement building as we move uh, closer to the Women's World Cup in France. And of course, we'll be fully behind Banyana Banyana as they play in their inaugural Women's World Cup. Now, uh, moving on to our trivia question. And we asked you earlier, who will Banyana Banyana play in their FIFA World Cup opening match? And uh, let's take a look at some of those answers. All right, uh, Nyalalani, Jack says, uh, morning guys, they will face Spain in the opener. Victor Zwane says, uh, good morning, Banyana Banyana will face Spain in their opening match on uh, the FIFA Women's World Cup. Catlejo says, Spain. And I guess it was very easy this morning. Of course, it is Spain. Nothing to wait through because it's the first time that we will be playing in that World Cup. So uh, Banyana Banyana will be playing their opening match against Spain. That's in June. And uh, South Africa are in Group B alongside Spain, China and Germany. Damn, it doesn't get any tougher than that. All right, uh, that's where we're going to leave our sports news uh, for this hour. We'll bring you more sports news.